The title for my sermon tonight is Forceful Advancement versus Wishful Thinking. In Mark chapter 4, verse 26 to 29, the Bible reads, He also said, This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. Mm. The kingdom of God or the church is always going to grow. Yeah. Why? Because God simply wants it to grow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't know how, we don't know with who, we don't know when. Yeah. All we know is that the church is going to grow. Mm. When we evangelize, when we share our faith, do we know who's open and not? No. No. We don't. I think about a brother named Sahel. Mm -hmm. Sahel yeah. was met actually on the way to another Bible study. Oh, and yeah. it was in uh, Tafe. It was actually, Sean and I actually there. And he was one of those like, Tafe was dead. And Sahel comes up and we're like, okay, I'll just share my faith with him. He's from a Muslim background. No one would have thought this guy would come to Bible talk, mm -hmm. study the Bible, and become a disciple. Mm -hmm. Till this day, he is still a faithful disciple. Come Amen. On, like a farmer and their crops. A farmer, they sow their seeds day and night. They don't know exactly when it's going to bear fruit. Mm. In the same way, a farmer will wait till the crop produces. Mm. They're reliant on environmental factors, things like the weather, things like the sun, the moisture. Mm. They are dependent on the environment. Mm. As disciples, this is all that we're dependent on. Our environment is God mm. and God alone. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5 to 6, on, What after all is Apollos? And what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe. As the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed. Apollos watered it. But God has been making it grow. Yeah. Our job as disciples is to simply harvest when the, the crop is ripe. Let's go. Mm -hmm. You know, when the harvest is ready, a farmer would literally, okay, let's go. They'll grab all the resources they can to harvest the crops. Yep. They don't think about how long will this take. They don't think about, mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to wait till tomorrow. They just make sure that they live off the harvest. Mm -hmm. If it goes under, what happens is if they cut it uh, uh, when it's not ripe, it'll become immature. Mm. The fruit wouldn't be tasty. I, I don't know if you've had a... Uh, unripe banana. Yeah. It's just like, it leaves you with some like, aftertaste. It's so weird, right? Mm. If it's too late, you know it become very bitter mm. and it'll still die. Mm. We have uh, some uh, fruits in our house that were actually produced in uh, Raffaro's uh, farm. And you know, an avocado we had uh, last night. When it's just left there, it rots, it smells, the fruit flies are out. It's disgusting. Mm. A skilled farmer knows exactly when to harvest mm. and what to do when the harvest is not yet there. Mm -hmm. So this morning, or, oh this morning, now I'm changing it up here. <laughs> Tonight, I want to talk about how we can have a spiritual harvest. Come on. It's a very practical lesson, so I encourage you guys, you know, take up your, your pens, your papers, take a lot of notes. It's very practical. Come on. Mm -hmm. Point number one is a time to plant. The first thing you do is you must plant. Yeah. In Luke chapter 10 verse 2, the Bible says, He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Mm. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore to send out workers into His harvest field. The issue of the scripture is not the harvest, but the workers, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. If you have no one to work with, the first thing you do is to plant. That's, that's your only role. I'm going to plant seeds right now. Yeah. You want to make sure you've done, first of all, your follow-up. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you guys, but I've only been here for like nearly not even a year yet. And i got a lot of people I need to follow up with. Mm -hmm. Still, mm -hmm. I've been doing it. I'm sure for you guys, those who are locals, those who have been here for two, three, four, five years, I'm sure you guys have a lot of people to follow up with. Mm -hmm. That's the first priority. Let's make sure we, uh, we know what we're dealing with so mm -hmm. we, before we go out and evangelize. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is our second step, is to completely focus on evangelism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All you're going to do is to simply just share your faith. Just go after it. Mm -hmm. and I think the stuff we've come to realize that this is what we need to do. Yeah. But at the start of the year, literally like, we're like dry 
and we're evangelizing. Our goal is to reach 25, or make 25 contacts in a, in a week. Mm. And yeah. it's not an easy thing. <laughs> We've had long nights already, literally. I'll show you an example. Sonia and I, as I've shared already, we had to share like that whole day, just get five contacts each. Mm. Mm -hmm. And one time I was with Ralph, we had family time. I took him out to um, watch Spider-Man. He didn't watch it, he hasn't watched it. But now he has, amen. Hey, yeah. man, it's, young. it's such a good movie. <laughs> Yeah. It's like 10 p.m. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward for this after credit scene and Raph's like, I need two more contacts. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no. amen. We go out for like nearly probably like 45 minutes finding two. We found two more people, amen. But it, see, it takes some hustle. It takes some devotion. But we see the fruits as a result. We see the studies rolling in. We have the visitors coming out. The great news that are coming out as a result. Amen. Yeah. All your existing friends to study, your current existing friends studying the Bible, they're the first go as well. You know, mm -hmm. Barry has a lot of friends. I'm sure cool. you guys are locals, you have a lot of friends. Yeah. Ask them to simply study the Bible. It's, yeah. it's, don't make it complicated. You don't have to bring them out to like Friday and then Sunday. Just say, hey, would you want to study the Bible? Yeah. Yeah. It's very simple. My question is, how many friends do you have on your phone? Mm. Why ask friends? is because sometimes we don't view our contacts as friends. Mm. And that's a conviction that I've been uh, really trying to teach my, um, my messy is to really view people you meet as potential brothers and sisters, but also friends. Yeah. Yeah. If they're going to become disciples, are you just going to treat them as a visitor? Right. Are you going to treat them as a true friend? Yeah. Bible Talk leads, we're going to make sure that everyone is also following suit. Uh, we lead by example, mm. everyone follows suit, and yeah. they follow up as well. Come on. We're going to do it with them, encourage them, teach them how to do it. Use your discipling time, that's what it's all about, mm -hmm. making disciples. <laughs> Insist on everyone in the ministry is a worker. Yeah. Let's go to uh, Mark chapter 1. Come on. Come on. In Mark chapter 1, we read 14 and 18. The Bible reads, After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Mm. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and they followed him. Mm. Jesus, firstly, he, just, he goes out evangelizing, right? He mm. preaches the word and he finds disciples and calls them to the exact same thing he just done. Yeah. Now, as a disciple, we should never be afraid of calling each other to follow our example, to yeah. follow evangelism. Mm -hmm. You know, when we made Jesus Lord of our lives, we made Him Lord of our lives. That's a personal commitment we made. Yeah. It's yeah. totally voluntary. Mm -hmm. So we shouldn't be afraid of having to try to pull someone to evangelize. That is their mm -hmm. personal call. Yeah. And we just got to make sure they see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the longer someone stays idle or unrepented, right. the harder it is for them to change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Jesus, as we can see here, He made them fishers of men. Yeah. He wasn't just like, okay, you guys are, you got the fit. He had to make them into fishers of men. Mm. It's not a natural thing that occurs when we make disciples. Mm. You know, it's a lot of change as we, we give analogies, right? If you want to make a table into a chair, you've got to cut it down first and then put in some new things, right? Mm. Yeah. So doing the work of a disciple does not naturally come. Mm. And we need to make sure as fishers of men, young or old, that we're always fishers of men. Yeah. It's very easy to slide back and to forget what our true purpose is as disciples. Yeah. A good tip which um, Kip actually preaches, evangelism is for two purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, number one is to seek and save the lost. Mm -hmm. And number two is to keep the saved saved. Amen. Yeah. And we see how the faith it brings when we share our faith. Yeah, yeah. And there's a, there's a time, like I mentioned, you guys probably know in Hong Kong, when we didn't share our faith for a bit because of the whole protest, and it, mm -hmm. it struck our faith. But the moment we went out, despite of the, you know, the, the havoc and all the crazy thing that's going outside, it just really lifts up disciples. That's what sharing does to our, yeah. ourselves when we just share the good news. My question is, who is not a worker in your ministry and what are you doing about it? Mm. Now, consider who brings out the most friends to Bible talk? Mm. Who brings little or, to, or none? These are just signs we've got to pay attention to to see if someone's really working or not. Mm. My, my question for ourselves is, do, do you have a personal visitor this Friday? Mm. Come on. Do your disciples have a personal visitor? You know, if not, it's not too late. Mm. 
Yeah. It's only the start. This is the start of the year. It's not going to change now. Let's do it now. Yeah, yeah, and I think like we have momentum right now. As what Sean preaches, it's hard to, to restart that momentum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to just, let's go with it right now. We're in the year of the Spirit. Let's get fired up. Amen. 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 Let's go. Point number two is a time to water. Once you've planted, once you have people you're working with, we got to water them. Mm -hmm. yeah. In John chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. Come on, Brandon. On the third, third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Mm. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. If you take an observation of the scripture, you kind of think that Jesus was not going to go unless his disciples came with him. Mm. You know, his, his, I think that his mother was just invited, and then we see here, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, they came together as a unit. Yeah. So we see that the fellowship Jesus had with His disciples, He involved them thoroughly into His life. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, most people are looking for love, mm -hmm. looking for friendships, mm -hmm. looking for family, looking to belong. Mm -hmm. They're not looking, not many people, you have very few people you meet that actually desire a five-day study challenge. You know what I mean? That's like the Bible <laughs> five days in a row. Yeah. Or teach me the Lord, show me how to be a disciple. It's very rare you find those kind of people. Mm. We need to involve people into our lives. Yeah. Yeah. Our, our, our Bible talks and our houses are literally the unit of a house. Mm. Before this looks great, it has to start in our Bible talks and our households. Yeah. Yeah. You know, people can tell the difference between a fellowship and the meeting. Mm -hmm. That's my conviction that I wrote. When I come to church, do I, do I see a meeting? Mm. I can t everyone can tell it's a meeting. Mm. If you see people's attitude, you see their, their facial experiences, ex ex expressions, you see how they con interact with people. Mm. Or is it a fellowship where they really see a family, where they see yeah. the, the relationships, on, right? Do they see a fellowship or a meeting? Come on. Mm. My question is, are you happy with your personal Bible talk? Are you happy to be a part of that? Mm. Are you genuinely happy? You know, I am generally happy even with Massey, you. You know, I, I love, I love my, my, my team. You know, we have a multicultural, we're all different, we have strengths and weaknesses. We really rub off each other. And what really, also just on Instagram, you know, Massey, you Insta, I'm really so proud of our Instagram page. It's like, man, we, it is, these are memories we're creating. I want you guys to have that, you know, that same desire. Yeah. I'm not sure how much you guys desire, but I just want to encourage you guys. Mm. It's your Bible talk. Mm. You know, yeah. you make it the way you want it. You preach it into existence. Yeah. Like, if there's things that you don't like about it, just be open and honest. It's fine. Yeah. The leaders are not perfect. Right. You know, we don't go yes. all sort it out. Let's just, the more we interact with each other and collaborate, the better things will become. Yeah. And the more you'll enjoy it as a disciple. You don't mm. want to live in like a hole for the rest of your life. Come on, brother. Mm. Yeah. You need to constantly have excellent uh, Bible talks and family times. Come on. So, uh, Bible talk leaders, like, this means like controversial and relevant life topics. Mm -hmm. Now, I think if someone is not challenged when they leave, you didn't, you just, you wasted that. You wasted yeah. that opportunity. My, my priority is to just focus on one and you, you've done your job. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't focus on one, you get none. Mm -hmm. You know, have fun games. I think the game's master. We know Sean is the game's master. Mm -hmm. and this guy always has games. Literally, even like in Sydney, I was calling out, bro, what are your game ideas? This guy knows a lot somehow. You know, he's just really creative in that way. Uh, Bible talk for uh, Massey. We love Uno. Mm -hmm. You know, have your own like theme game, but also be okay to change it every single week. Mm -hmm. You know, keep it active. Keep it, keep it on the go. Phone people after the day after. I think this is very important. There's a, there's a theme I've learned from my previous discipler. His name is Pete Wade. And he, he told me that love is in the follow-up. Come on. Yeah. And that it's so true. Yeah. Love is in the follow-up. The focus, once again, is to make friends and just not contacts. Yeah. Mm. You know, I think about, consider ways, maybe if you guys have ideas, what are some ways you guys have been won over <laughs> to the kingdom? I told Barry, Barry says basketball with Chris. Mm. You know, Chris. literally, Chris got in with basketball, and that's what that was Barry's love language. Yeah, <laughs> Isabel, you know, we know that Eden and Marga have been praying so long for mm. Israel to become a disciple, mm. and her regular times with the cafe and praying with Jessica, Je um, Jenna, and Barrick really changed her heart. Come on, Millie. She was uh, motivated by the zeal and the persistence of disciples, really wanting to get her closer to God. Mm -hmm. When she came to church, she was overwhelmed with that love. Mm -hmm. 
right? Consider your your experiences. Mm -hmm. You know, I know for myself, honestly, the like Mason. You know, you might not know. You might know. Mm -hmm. Might not. Mason Fisalika, he admits it himself. He wasn't doing that good spiritually. Um, <clears throat> there was only one time in our whole Bible studies that we spent time together. It was only for like 10, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. It was just on campus. It was like a spontaneous. Hey, you free? You just want to just chill out? And when I had, I had chosen to walk away from the studies after discipleship, it was just too much for me. Six months later, I called him up. And the, the reason why I did that was because I was just, com just enough comfortable to call him back. Mm. But literally, I just view this guy as some religious guy just rebuking me from these studies. Mm. It wasn't a very great example. And by God's grace, we're all here. <laughs> Learning from Eric took over the study, which is Sean's brother. And... Eric did things that really just, you know, he, he kind of self-invited himself. Mm -hmm. He, um, one time, like, light and darkness, kind of come to your house. And literally, in my culture, at least for myself, I never invite friends over to my house. Mm -hmm. It's just, like, weird. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't think they'll like my family. <laughs> it would be weird. <laughs> Whatever. Mm. Right? He came into my house, and for me, that was the turning point where this guy was, like, I lived in Parramatta. The, the church was in, in, like, the city of Sydney. It took, like, an hour bus. Mm -hmm. And he went an hour back and forward just to come to my place to do a Bible study. Mm -hmm. For me, that really showed me this guy really cared. Right. So I'm going to show you examples because, you know, our examples are really important. Yeah. Yeah. And the yeah. way we've filled love, we've got to express that same love Absolutely. according to their primary love language. Wow. Yeah. There's, a great, there's great books, Five Love Languages, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Mm -hmm. You know, learn from other people. In imitate other disciples who are great at building deep friendships. Come on, Brandon. You know, we've got to use the group to make them spiritual. You know, they say, you know, a child is, you know, a it takes a village to raise a child. Yeah. 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 I'm not saying people we meet are children. Some of them are teens. That's so cool. But it takes a community to raise up people. Right. Yeah. Come on. You know, we need to engage them in different relationships. That's what I love about the kingdom, you know. Mm. We have, like what Raph was sharing, like we have an Indian um, friend named Stefan yeah. who, does, there's no other Indians here to relate, and he calls out one from... Indian disciple named Paul from Sydney to help mm. him out. Like, isn't that amazing? We yeah, have that right. connection. Yeah. We've got to utilize these connections. Yeah. You know, I know priority is our Bible talk. We've got to make sure we focus on our Bible talks mm. as primary source and then expand when, if necessary. Mm. Mm. Richie over here. Come on, Richie. Come on, Richie. Richie was a product, was a kingdom product. Yeah. It was, so I, um, I think it was Raf or Sianna, we were signing like a Seeking God study with Richie. And then Tyrone took over with the Bible studies. Other brothers were praying with him. It was a group effort. Mm. Yeah. And the reward that has on our personal lives, like when he gets when he gets baptized, yeah. we're like, wow, this is this is our brother. We mm. we've given him everything. Come on, Richie. Come on, Richie. Come on, Richie. I think another brother named King, who was in Sydney. Mm. Emmanuel was the one leading the Bible studies, and all the feelings he would have, I was the one dealing that with King. Mm. And we made a really good team. Come on. And those other Leo who was getting in there. People need to see the kingdom in, in yeah. its entirety. Yeah. Yeah. So my encouragement practically also is for every disciple after Bible talk should be running after getting everyone's numbers. Mm. Yeah. You know, it shouldn't be just up to the Bible talk leaders to get their numbers. Everyone should be getting involved. Mm -hmm. Why? We're building a family. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Point number three. A time to harvest. Mm. There's three important questions to really ask before someone gets baptized. Number one is, do they feel love, the love of God? Mm. In John chapter 13, verse 34 to 35, it says, A new command I give you, mm -hmm. love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. Mm. By this, everyone know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. People are not attracted by sacrifice, hard work, <laughs> or hours of evangelism. We all know that. Mm. Yeah. So, my question is, is your friend signed the Bible at the point where they see the love of God mm. and the love of the kingdom? Do they see themselves living this life as a disciple? Or do they just see it as a bunch of insurmountable challenges? Mm. Jesus knew how important it was to really gather people and to really have a good view of what the kingdom is really all about. Mm -hmm. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 19, oh, the Bible says, The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Here's a God and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proven right by her deeds. Mm. They are not ready for harvest until they see the love of the kingdom, until they feel the love of God. 
Mm. Hard work does not, and no love does not produce fruit. Right. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's what people always also preach as well. Like if you're working really hard and there's no fruit, it's because there's a lack of love, most probably. Mm. Second point is, do they see they are lost? Mm. In John chapter eight, verse thirty-one to thirty-two, to the Jews who had believed him. Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you're really my disciples. Mm. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Well, no one can be motivated to be saved if they already think they're saved. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You know, when starting seeking God with people, especially the religious, we've got to be confrontational with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Questions like, what's the difference between being religious and being righteous? Mm -hmm. We've got to get deep into their heart, reveal what's in their heart. Yeah. You know, ask them, what's it like? Why do you think the Pharisees were lost? Even though they read their Bibles, they went to church, they gave tithes. Right. You know, challenge them to do something by the end of that study that they haven't been doing already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If that's read a, buy a Bible, if that is to, you know, bring out friends to church or change the schedule for the kingdom. I personally believe that seeking God's study should be the most challenging study. Mm -hmm. Come on. Simply because it's all about the heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Discipleship, light and darkness, it's just doing things. That doesn't improve someone's repentance. When you see someone's true, real heart in seeking God, are you all in for God? Mm -hmm. It's very simple. When studying the Word of God study, especially with the religious, you know, ask how often do they read the Bible? Right. How much do they read the Bible? Guys, you know that you, see, you meet some you know, verse of the day readers? Yeah. Yeah. Right? You say, I read a verse. I've done the math. If you read one verse in a day, you'll be reading, it takes the whole, it take 85 years. Wow. And two months to read the whole Bible. Wow. 85 years. Wow. Wow. Uh, do, they, do they know that? I don't think so. Mm. <laughs> if you read just a chapter a day, guess what? It'll take you three years and three months to read the whole Bible. Mm. Mm. Are you willing to wait that long to read the whole Bible? Wow. How important is the Word of God to you? Come on, Come on. You know, If you really want to be a follower of it, you've got to know the whole Bible. Mm. Yeah. So let's dig deep roots. Yeah. When studying discipleship, especially with the religious, we have five points. We've got to really nail down if they are lost or saved with these five key points. Mm. Ask things about church growth. Personally, I met a, a religious guy, and I started talking to him about, like, is your church growing? And he took, he took offense to that. Mm. You know? It's a, it's a measure of discipleship. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know why people feel maybe sensitive towards that, but these are some questions we should ask to actually reveal you know, where their heart is. Like, are yeah. they willing to grow? Are they willing to see their church grow? You yeah. know, ask who disciples them and who they disciple. Mm -hmm. You know, ask how many strangers they spoke to in the last week. Yeah. Yeah. You get a pattern of a lifestyle here. Mm -hmm. And after discipleship, make sure you actually take them out evangelizing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the greatest ideal. Mm -hmm. Lastly, when studying light and darkness, you know, always do a timeline before you start the study. Mm. You know, I, I've seen it done, I've seen it not done, and literally the whole study is messed up. Yeah. Because you're trying to, they, they're like, okay, you don't know what they truly believed in in the start, and they start to conform their new teachings to what you just taught them, yeah. mm. and you mess up the whole study. Mm -hmm. I've seen it happen. So ask them what their belief of baptism was before the study. Yeah. You know, why they did it, if they did it. You know, how, what do they do, what do they believe in is for the forgiveness of sins. You know, if necessary, go to their church website, you know, go to, go to their About Us page, roll them through their own uh, beliefs. Come on, Brandon. You know, we've got to force the salvation issue. Mm. I believe um, just in our studies, we just got to intent to forcefully advance the kingdom, we need to intensify our studies. Yeah. Mm. We, need, we need to be real about the Word of God and real about what we actually believe in, in our Come convictions. On. Come on. It's the only way to make true, hot, and not lukewarm disciples. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Last thing to, to question is, are they inspired? Mm. Are you inspired? Mm. Amen. John chapter 15, verse 8. Come on, Brandon. This is to my Father's glory, mm -hmm. that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Mm. Baptisms inspire baptisms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So testimonies, Good News Network, birthday parties, they inspire people. Mom. Yeah. When I had brought in, um, you know, like the, the disciples in Sydney, they did a surprise birthday as well. I love you guys in Sydney as well. My, my family came to that. Mm -hmm. And when they saw them sharing about my life, they were touched. Mm -hmm. Man, they were, <laughs> they were convicted because mm -hmm. they didn't know how to express the same love they had for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, these things change people's lives. Mm -hmm. I think about Aaron and Fung's wedding. You know, at first, mm -hmm. um, their parents did, oh, um, Fung's parents did not like Aaron. 
Mm. <laughs> They're totally opposing to this mm. idea. They came over, and because of the good news sharing, because of the um, the you know sharing for Aaron and Fang, they softened up. Yeah. Mm. We see the power that these um, events actually have. Mm. Yeah. So we got to also invite our friends to these events. Let them yeah. see all the wonders of the kingdom. Yeah. Mm. This discuss the date when to be baptized. Give them a vision. I, I do believe. No, the Bible says in Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. Mm. I, th I think this year I've, I've gained a, a strong conviction on this scripture. Come on. And, I've, and it's just, it's so important. We've got to make sure they see a vision. What I mean is like, visions and goals are one thing. To vision, have a vision is to see it. Mm. Yeah. It's to literally visualize what they want. Mm. Yeah. It's super important. You know, maybe it's um, Piha Beach, 12 p.m. with all the family and friends. Maybe that's what they really see mm -hmm. in this baptism. Maybe it's what Shelly had, right? Maybe it's <laughs> going through the dirt. No, 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 Shelly, yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's a bath with pedals, you know? I don't, to be honest, I didn't see any other sister baptism without the pedals. True. That's cool. I like that. <laughs> Come on. You know, we got to make unforgettable memories. Mm. You know, go through our, our website, our church website. You know, run them through a bit of the history. Guys, just recently, Kip preached about the you know, new crown of thorns phase two. Come on. Mm, yeah, yeah. And there's 92 nations yet to be planted mm. Mm -hmm. all across the world. And the goal is to finish it by 2030. Wow. Wow. Come on. Imagine, like, when you reach that point, he, he described it as a scripture of, like, you know, to put the capstone is like to finalize everything. Mm. Mm. When we've reached all nations, we have literally obeyed the greatest commandment. Wow. wow. You know? I'm going to be like 33 <laughs> at 2030. Like to think that, that's when, that's when Jesus died. But like, guys, this is, just think about that. We, we're a part of a church that actually takes this seriously, takes this command seriously. Come on. Like we're actually, this is our, this is the big vision of the church. Yeah, let's go. Like this is literally the big vision. Come and on. we got to grasp that ourselves. You know, get them to listen to specific sermons. Yeah. One note, we've got so many resources. Mm. No, they have to enjoy the life of being a disciple even before they get baptized as a disciple. Yeah. Mm. My last and final point <clears throat> is take hold of your ministry. Come on. Yeah. Come on, Hope you guys have uh, written a lot and you're still in tune. Let's go. Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. Let's go, From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing, mm. and forceful men lay hold of it. Yeah. Mm. No ministry advances powerfully and permanently unless you take hold of all its issues. Yeah. Yeah. As we know, an army needs a commander, a country needs a president or leader, Jacinta, I know you guys love her. Yeah. Every family needs a father, every ministry needs a Jesus-like example, a training women's ministry leader and evangelist. Mm -hmm. now, every successful team needs someone to push them. Mm. Yeah. You know, we don't actually like to be pushed because we are very fleshy, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How diamonds are made is created by force, by yeah. pressure. Mm -hmm. The difference between diamonds and coals is diamonds are made under pressure and coals aren't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we got to be grateful and see the vision of this. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, have a, I have a little uh, motivation for myself. This is my little uh, oh. life or 2022 visions. Come on. Come on. So literally, Rafferty knows it's just on my table. On. I have quiet times. The big vision that I have made for, for um, the North, or Massey. Come on. Come on. You know, the population of, of the North Shore is 205,865 people. Mm. It's, a, it's, a bigger, it's one of the fourth uh, biggest populations in New Zealand. Mm. Wow. That is the total vision. Because mm. Jesus says, make disciples of all nations. Right. He wants all people to be saved, right? That's a big vision. Amen. Mm. And out of this, I want new evangelists, new ministry Come on. Women's oh, ministry leaders being made. Yeah. Um, so you gotta have that big vision, and then you dissect it. Yeah. So 2022, I just want us to double as Massey Ministry yeah. from mm -hmm. four to eight. I want a North Brothers household, preferably yeah. with yeah. Barry and I, and more brothers to come. Mm -hmm. And my my prayer, my vision is to have Barry and Izzy leading come on, a Bible yeah. talk. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. And they're gonna have their own discipling partners. Mm -hmm. And Barry, we had a chat about this already. This guy is all in for it. Yeah. So yeah. let's yeah. go, bro. Yeah. So we need <laughs> That's it. We gotta make goals specific and achievable. Let's mm -hmm. go. You know, what are the visions for your ministry? Yeah. You know, what are the life visions and what are the yearly visions? Mm -hmm. If you guys haven't figured that out, write it down. You know, make it by the end of this week. You have that for your Bible talk. Mm -hmm. It's super important. 
And you've got to make sure if everyone's on board. Is everyone unified towards? Is everyone happy with that vision? Mm. Both ends of the ministry, with all the focus on seeking, saving the lost, we've got to also make sure we're not leaving anyone behind. Yeah. My last point here. We've got to make sure everyone is being discipled weekly yeah. and discipled well. Mm. Yeah. Now, always use scriptures in your D times. Yeah. Don't underestimate the scriptures. Always it. Just always use the scriptures. And focus on discipling one issue at a time. Mm. Don't overwhelm them with so many different things. Mm. You just blow them out of the water. Mm. Growing people will not fall away. Mm. The test of effective discipling is, you know, you ask your disciples' disciple, how was their, the, the, the last month of your discipling times? Mm. That's how you really know if you're actually effectively discipling mm. or if your disciples are effectively discipling. Now, discipling is not enough. As you know, we got to, you know, include more people into the growth pro process. Mm. Yeah. You know, I'm excited for our ministry. So we have like the whole year planned out. Me and I really planned the year out, and we're having fun things every single month. Yeah. We're going to Beha Beach. You know, we're going to karaoke. Ooh. We're going to hot pot. Amen. <clears throat> we're going to Rainbow well, we, rainbows then. Like yeah. YOLO. Like you live <laughs> once. And guess what? It's not just about for the ministry to keep them encouraged, number one, but if you have studies, you invite them over yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. They can see the fun of the kingdom. Come on. Yeah, yeah. You know, help your disciples with their dreams. If mm -hmm. they want a date, you gotta help them to date. Mm -hmm. If they want finances and savings, you gotta help them out personally. Yeah. You know, as you may already know, the GLC is a, the goal that we want the whole church to Come be on. there. Like, yeah. I'm gonna cut and paste. Yeah, come in, on. In America, like, wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah. No person left behind. You don't feel like, oh, is this person okay? You, it'll change your life, I'm telling you. Yeah. Yeah. You see the worldwide movement, it'll change your life. Yeah. Yeah. Pull people in sight, especially the weak. It'll strengthen their faith. Mm -hmm. Last scripture in Proverbs 27, 23, one of my favorites. <clears throat> it says, be sure you know the condition of your flocks. Mm -hmm. Give careful attention to your herds. Mm -hmm. In conclusion, there's a lot of practicals here that you guys already know. This is a study that you'll need to go back over, mm. you know, when you're watering, when you're planting, when you're harvesting. You now have deep convictions, and by this, we will forcefully advance God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. God be all the glory. Yeah. Yeah.